Today I'm going to tell you about Ravi. He's a 47-year-old man who lives in Toronto who immigrated from India 16 years ago. And like many people his age, his knee started acting up a few years ago. He chalked it up to an old basketball injury and long hours sitting at his desk at work. But as you'll soon find out, Ravi wasn't your typical 47-year-old man. And little did he know that his knee pain was actually a sign of something much more sinister. Like so many other people, Ravi's knee pain flared up from time to time. When he felt the pain starting to come on again, he did what he always did. Rest, ice, and Advil. He didn't think much of it and expected it to improve over the next week or so like it always did. But this time was different. The pain just kept getting worse. His knee was so swollen and painful that he couldn't even walk or straighten his leg. Nothing was touching the pain and eventually he couldn't even sleep. He really didn't want to go to the emergency department. He'd heard that the wait times were up to 18 hours, but he just couldn't hold off any longer. So he went to the hospital. Of course, knee pain doesn't usually get prioritized in the emergency department, especially if it's not broken and you don't have a fever. So Ravi waited and waited until he finally saw a doctor about 10 hours later. On examination, the emergency doctor noted significant swelling of his right knee and severe pain with any movement. This is really concerning for a septic joint, which is as bad as it sounds. Basically, bacteria start growing inside the lubricating fluid of your joint. And since we don't have many immune cells inside our joint to kill off bacteria, an infection can get out of hand really quickly. So the emergency doctor ordered some blood work and an x-ray to get a closer look. And this is where things get interesting. Check this out. You don't have to be a radiologist to see that something is very wrong with Ravi's knee. So they did a CT scan to take an even closer look. It almost looks like someone or something took a bite right out of Ravi's bone. This is called an erosion. And this one's particularly dramatic. In the meantime, his physician reviewed his blood work. It was essentially normal, except for one test called the CRP, which indicates high levels of inflammation in the body. So now we need to figure out what's destroying Ravi's knee and causing all this inflammation, and is it curable? So what we really need to get to the bottom of this is a sample of the fluid from Ravi's knee. This is actually a pretty common procedure called an arthrocentesis, and I do it all the time as a rheumatologist. But some people definitely get a little squeamish, so if you don't like needles, you may want to close your eyes for this next part. Basically, I sterilize and freeze the skin. Then I take a large needle and insert it deep into the knee joint. In the lab, they ran the fluid through a cell counter, which showed high levels of white blood cells. Then they used a special microscope to look for crystals. And it was crystal clear. And finally, they used a gram stain to look for bacteria and a special stain to look for tuberculosis. And they found nothing, nada, not a single bacteria in sight. Frustrating news for Ravi, who was still in excruciating pain and just wanted to know the cause. But the search for menacing bacteria doesn't end there. We still have to wait for the culture which is when the lab tries to grow a bacterial colony out of the fluid sample, which usually takes a few days to come back. So in the meantime, Ravi was admitted to hospital on IV antibiotics just to be safe. Okay, fast forward a few days. The cultures still haven't grown any bacteria. Ravi is still on antibiotics and his knee is just as swollen and painful as ever. These are the moments you've just got to step back and think a little bit more broadly. So let's go back to the drawing board. What's aggressively eating away at Ravi's knee and causing those huge erosions? It's definitely not the typical bacteria we see in a joint infection, but there are still some categories of bacteria and pathogens that don't get picked up on our routine cultures and don't get killed by our strongest antibiotics. So we can't cross infection off just yet. Could it be Ravi's immune system that's attacking the knee and eating away at the bone? Possibly, but it seems less likely. Blood work for specific antibodies came back negative, and after years of pain, I would have expected other symptoms to develop in most autoimmune diseases. Crystals are also less likely, which brings us to cancer. Ravi's doctors decided to scan his whole body for any tumors, and it's a good thing they did, 
but not for the reason you might suspect. When the radiologist was scrolling through the images, no tumors or masses were seen. But something unexpected caught his attention. There were scars at the top of Ravi's lungs. Finally, another clue. But are they connected? What do his lungs have to do with his knee? Ravi's doctor consulted the infectious disease specialist. She reviewed Ravi's case closely, and three important clues stood out to her. One, his knee pain had been going on for years, although this was by far the worst flare. Two, Ravi immigrated from India, which means as a child, he was exposed to different infections that aren't common here in Canada. And finally, he has scarring at the top of his lungs. So the infectious disease specialist called up the lab and asked them to run one more test on the fluid from Ravi's knee. A special test called PCR, which detects DNA from one particular bacteria that's extremely difficult to diagnose. When the test came back positive, Ravi was diagnosed with tuberculosis. You might be thinking, but the stain and the culture were both negative. How is this possible? Well, as you'll see, TB is a super sneaky bacteria. The stain is positive less than 40% of the time, and the culture can take up to eight weeks to grow. So we often turn to PCR to get a quick, reliable answer while we're waiting for cultures. Okay, so we have a diagnosis, but how did TB get in his knee? Isn't it normally a lung infection? And if he caught the infection decades ago in India, why is he getting sick from it now? Well, this is where things get really fascinating. Tuberculosis is a bacterial infection that has plagued humanity for millennia. We've even gone back and diagnosed Egyptian mummies with this disease. It ripped through Europe in the 17th to 19th centuries, causing 25% of deaths. Think about that. One in four deaths were caused by TB. We lost so many brilliant minds. Emily Bronte, Kafka, Thoreau, and Chopin, one of my favorite composers. Although they didn't know what caused it at the time, we now know that TB is a highly contagious airborne infection that's spread by coughing. Most people developed respiratory symptoms, cough, fever, weight loss, but it can also spread throughout the body. And even when the bacteria was discovered in 1882, it still took another 60 years to develop an effective treatment. So in the meantime, people were sent to sanatoriums for rest and fresh air, which was considered the gold standard treatment at that time. Of course, fresh air wasn't the cure, but it was a really important public health intervention to isolate the affected people and prevent the spread. Same concept that was used in the COVID-19 pandemic when people were told to stay home. Fortunately, today we do have good treatments for TB, but it still remains one of the most difficult bacteria to identify and kill, but more on that later. Okay, let's get back to Ravi. How did tuberculosis end up in his knee? To explain that, we need to go back about 30 years when Ravi was growing up in India. As a teenager, he was exposed to a sick relative who had TB. The bacteria spread through the air and entered Ravi's lungs. Like 95% of people exposed, his immune system was able to contain the infection so he had no symptoms. But don't be fooled, TB wasn't killed. It was just lying dormant like an undercover operative. Here's what happened. When TB entered Ravi's body, it was quickly detected by his macrophages. Think of them like the immune system's security guards, always patrolling and looking for intruders. The macrophages acted according to protocol, engulfing TB and attempting to kill the bacteria. But TB came prepared with mycolic acid armored plating. Not only was it able to resist these attacks, but it was able to live and replicate inside the macrophage all according to its devious plan. The macrophage sent out a distress signal and a whole army of immune cells came to the rescue. Ravi's immune cells literally squished together to form a tight spherical ball to wall off the infection and protect the rest of the body. And this ball of inflammatory cells is called a granuloma. Think of it like a maximum security prison to hold the intruder. Once TB is contained, it's not contagious anymore, and we call this condition latent tuberculosis. And believe it or not, 1.8 
billion people worldwide are infected with latent tuberculosis. Many people live their whole lives with latent TB locked safely away in its granuloma prison. But for up to 10% of people, TB is able to break free when their immune system weakens, and then it can wreak havoc on the body. And that's exactly what happened to Ravi five years ago. We don't know exactly what caused Ravi's immune system to weaken, but whatever it is, TB was able to escape from his prison infiltrate into his blood vessels and travel all the way down to his right knee, where it latched on and festered, slowly eating away at his bone until it looked like this. So how do we stop TB from destroying Ravi's knee and spreading to the rest of his body? Now this is where the big guns come in. The standard regimen involves four different antibiotics, and the treatment usually goes on for at least six months. And to put that into perspective, most bacterial pneumonias are treated with five days of antibiotics. So why is the treatment so extreme? Well, TB is very difficult to kill, and it's very creative in its ability to develop resistance to our antibiotics. Honestly, if it wasn't trying to kill us, I'd be impressed. There have even been reports of totally drug-resistant TB coming out of India, Iran, and Italy. And although the World Health Organization hasn't recognized the term totally drug-resistant yet, it's definitely a concerning trend to see. Fortunately for Ravi, four weeks after being discharged home, he got a phone call from his doctor telling him that his knee culture had finally grown tuberculosis. Shout out to the lab for being so patient. In the lab, they exposed TB to the standard antibiotics, and to everyone's relief, it was not drug resistant. So in the end, Ravi was treated with nine months of antibiotics. Yep, the amount of time it takes to grow a baby or eradicate this tricky bacteria from your knee. Ravi's knee felt so much better. It wasn't swollen anymore, he was able to walk again, and he was even back at the gym. Unfortunately, the erosions in his knee will never go away and they do cause him some pain from time to time. So eventually he'll probably need a knee replacement, although Ravi wants to get as much mileage as possible out of his knee. For about a quarter of the world's population, 1.8 billion people living with latent tuberculosis, the struggle continues. But luckily, the WHO and governments around the world have made eradication of this disease a top public health priority. So what did you think? Were you surprised by the diagnosis? Or did you think it was gonna be an autoimmune disease instead? So if you love medical mysteries like this, I've got a whole playlist of them. You might like this video about a woman who made one simple change to her diet that caused her so much leg pain that she ended up in the emergency department. Be sure to like and subscribe, and that way I'll see you in the next video. So, bye for now.